listening to SOJC Radio, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and teaching the doctrine of Christ to the whole world. Good evening and welcome to Friday night SOJC Remnant Gathering. Grab your Bible and your pens and your paper and when two or three are gathered in his name, the Lord is right here with us. So thank you for joining us and here's Brother David. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the May 6th, 2022 edition of the FOJC Remnant Gathering. I am David Carey Cohen. For the next hour, we will be studying the Word of God. We are so thankful for all of you that are joining us. Our study for this evening will be entitled, Standing in the Council of the Most High. As always, many things to pray about, um, and we're going to make mention a few here. Uh, Sarah, Norm Louder, Sarah and Norm Louder, for spiritual, financial, and uh, relief from physical attack. Jonathan Colas' wife passed away, and they've been together since 2008. And uh, Jonathan is one of our and his wife were some of our chat room people. So we certainly uh, want to pray that the Lord just comfort them this time, and also. Julie Franklin, Julie's husband, passed away this week also. And uh, after many years together, and we just pray that the Lord comfort those broken hearts and just let the, the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter, come. Many things to pray about. Our nation stands on the very cusp of violence in the streets food shortages that are going to worsen and inflation. I know that we're all aware of this. We just want to pray that um, understanding come, the judgment of God is coming, but just pray to uh, be a light during this time to prepare yourself for that which is coming because it is coming very, very quickly. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we do thank you so much once again for an opportunity to preach the word of God over the internet and over our other venues and we want to lift up Sarah and Norm Louder. Father we pray that you bless them spiritually and financially and Father help them learn how to stand against the attack of the evil one. And Father for Jonathan Colas whose wife passed away. Father we just pray that you just comfort Jonathan's heart that you just be with the whole family during this time and just let your Holy Spirit be his comforter and also for Julie Franklin Lord also for Julie we just pray that in this time of loss that you just help mend that broken heart and just be there with her with your presence and help her during this time and Father we just um we just thank you because you will send the comforter and father for these troubled times in our nations father we just pray that you just help the israel of god to prepare itself to stand in these last days and father we're just so thankful for an opportunity to speak your truth and speak your word during these troubled times and father we just pray for this message this evening that you just anoint it and just let it bring forth fruit as you would see fit in the mighty name of jesus we pray and we agree amen and amen worship the lord for just a few moments and we're going to be back with our study for this evening standing in the council of the most high we're sorry but because of copyright rules you cannot hear my music However, if you want to hear the message in its entirety with my music, you can join us on the radio page on Friday nights for the live audio broadcast at 6 p.m. Central Time, or you can listen on our podcast page at fojcradio.com. Here's Brother David. Turn your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 23. We'll begin in verse 18. Standing in the council of the Most High. For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord, and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word, and 
heard it. Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. Mark that phrase in the text. In the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. We're studying something here in the prophet Jeremiah and in other prophetic text that was a reality in 586 BC when Jerusalem fell to the Babylonians but this will have another fulfillment and in the latter days you you shall consider it perfectly you'll perfectly understand it in verse 21 I have not sent these prophets yet they ran I have not spoken to them yet they prophesied But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way. There is no true prophetic message that does not seek to turn people from their evil way. Then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? In the text today, when it talks about standing in the counsel of the Lord, that is the Hebrew word sowed. It is 5475. And a lot of our, in your in your Strong's number, and we're going to be looking at that word. Understanding this word is uh, central to getting the full meat out of our study. And I want to look at this word in the Theological Dictionary of the Old Testament. This is volume 10. And it says it means Yahweh's counsel. And the sowed of Yahweh is the counsel where above the firmament the, the, the Father meets with the angels. We're going to be showing you the counsel of Yahweh. This is the sowed. Also, it means in its etymological connotation in the abstract meaning secret. It's a secret and it's an assembly and by comparison it means a secret that is revealed in an assembly. We're talking about a secret that is revealed in a specific place. And thirdly, in the theological dictionary, a very important nuance of this word sowed it means Yahweh's counsel or plan it is the basic requirement for every true prophet that he stand in the sowed of Yahweh counsel and plan God has a plan he has a counsel and if you do not hear that plan and that counsel it's going to be most unfortunate. So we're going to do everything we can to make it plain that everyone stand in that council of the Most High. Now, I want to read a little bit, and I have to just take a few moments to refute the false teaching about the sowed from the Messianic and Hebrew movement. And I'll read just a little bit from a book called of the Return of the Kosher Pig by Rabbi Itzhak Shapira. And he's one of the dandies of the Messianic and Hebrew movement. He's been on Benny Hinn, Jonathan Burnus, and all the big money guys on TBN. They call him the New Apostle Paul. Well, oh boy. I'll read just a little bit from his book, The Return of the Kosher Pig, on page 27. And just listen to what this man says. Some who hold the view that Yeshua is the Messiah, believe they are justified purely by the word of God. Now, I I think they're talking about me there. I believe we are justified purely by the word of God and the faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ upon his cross. Amen. The rabbi is talking to me. Going on, he said, I would like to stress the points, the point that the written words 
of the Hebrew Bible are the only authoritative words that are divinely inspired. Now there in that sentence there, the rabbi just flushed the New Testament. The only inspired writings of the Hebrew say goodbye to the New Testament. I mean, it's unbelievable. He goes on to say, uh, Judaism has defined a systematic method of interpret interpreting the scriptures over the course of the centuries known as pardes. And he makes no illusions that the pardes, as is taught in the Messianic movement, in the Hebrew root movement, it comes right from Judaism. And I, I have to periodically remind everybody, because there's such a demonic deception that if it's Jewish, it's cool. I have to remind people that Judaism rejects Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world. It is indeed the spirit of Antichrist in its most potent form, denying vehemently that Christ came in the flesh. Going on, he says, Pardes usually refers to the secrets of Torah within Judaism. And that's exactly what it is. It's Judaism. It's coming from Christ-rejecting rabbis. And he says on verse 29 of his book, he says, Rabbi Yitzhak Luria, who was the founding rabbi of the Pardes method, explains that the scriptures possess four layers that are represented by the word Pardes. Now, Yitzhak Luria is heralded in Judaism as the father of modern Kabbalah. This Pardes method, and you can see this in the most popular Hebrew root messianic study Bibles. It's right in there. Uh, it's nothing but pure, 100% unadulterated Kabbalah brought to you out of the pit of hell by the spirit of Antichrist. Don't make any uh, have any illusions about it. Now, in this Pardes method, the fourth level interpretation is called the Sod. So, the word Sod is thrown around in Hebrew root messianic circles, and basically what they do, they just say, well, I'm going to give you the Sod interpretation of this scripture, and they just give you some kind of a Kabbalistic, uh, Gnostic twist to the scripture. It's just absolute death absolute death. So, in the world that we live in, I have to distinguish vehemently that I'm not talking about the sowed as you would hear about in the Messianic or Hebrew root movement. I'm talking about the sowed as it is in the Word of God that comes down pure and undefiled from the throne in heaven from the very council of the Most High. Now, in Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 30, Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Now, when you say Jesus Christ has it come in the flesh, you're stealing a few of God's words right there. Uh, when Mr. Shapira says that only the Old Testament's inspired, where there goes a whole bunch more of God's word, doesn't it? And, of course, our dispensationalist friends, they want to tell us, well, the Old Testament that's all gone. And yeah, the words of Jesus, now, most of them are for the Jews in the millennial reign. Now, there's a few of them are for you, and we'll let you know what they are. Now, this is where we're at. We're at a time when there is a false sowed. Jeremiah the prophet said, in the latter days you shall perfectly understand it. This has been perfectly revealed and understood. There's a true sowed. And the word sowed, it means assembly, as well as the secret. And there is a true assembly in heaven where the word of the Lord goes forth. And there is a true assembly on the earth where the Lord, word of the Lord goes forth. And then there is the false sowed and the false assembly where the prophets that are stealing God's words from the people goes forth. The very hottest judgment of hell will be upon them people. And of course, the games that people want to play today, they want to say, well, I know that my church has an Easter egg hunt, but boy, they have a lot of truth on a lot of things. And I, I don't believe in the Easter egg hunt, but I like paying my tithes to the first church of the broken cistern. 
And in Romans chapter 118, it describes this attitude which is so prevalent. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. You cannot hold the truth in unrighteousness and that's exactly what these people are do when they are in an assembly putting forth a false sowed and they want to feel good about it because it might be right about a couple things you know a broken clock is right twice a day the prophet jeremiah in jeremiah 15 and 17 he said this and here's the word sowed again i sat not in the assembly of the mockers now that is the word sowed. That is the same word that is used for the council of Jehovah above the third heaven. I sat not in the assembly of the mockers, nor rejoiced. I sat alone. I sat alone. He refused to go to that false assembly. He would rather sit alone. He says nor rejoiced I sat alone because of thine hand for thou hast filled me with indignation and praise God this very moment I am filled with indignation against these false assemblies and thank God for it until you are ready to sit alone you are an unworthy vessel for God's truth if God reveals truth to you and you compromise it by trying to hold it in unrighteousness, that is all the truth you're going to receive. And you're going to be receiving false revelation from that point forward. You cannot hold the truth in unrighteousness. Well, you can. A lot of people do it. But it's not going to work out very good for them until you're ready to sit alone. You're not ready to receive God's truth. God's truth is there if you want it. But you have to be willing to sit alone, if need be, to receive it. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, and verse 18. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Think about that one. He that increaseth knowledge increases sorrow. And the more... And, you know, just like um, the past Jeremiah 15, 17, I sit alone. I didn't go to the assembly of the mockers and rejoice. Well, I tell you what, you, everyone loves fellowship. We like that warm, fuzzy feeling. And it's not a bad thing to have fellowship. We need human interaction. But a lot of people will place that over the truth of God. They will try to justify holding the truth in unrighteousness. But until you are ready to sit alone, you are not ready for the truth. There is no other way. This is the separation of the wheat and the tares. In in Psalm 1, and right here in the first Psalm, it tells you whether you're going to be a wheat or whether you're going to be a tare. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way... Of the ungodly shall perish all of those that are claiming to have a little bit of truth about this or that about whatever or whoever and you want to hold it in righteousness in pagan assemblies it's going to be a very very sad day for you when the Lord sends his judgment it's going to be so 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 sad in Jeremiah chapter 6 let's look what the prophet said in verse 11 therefore I am full of the fury of the Lord. 
You know, I tell you, some of these preachers, they're so namby-pamby and limp wrist. I think you could pull their nose and they wouldn't get mad. That nothing upsets them. We are to hate what God hates. And there has to be a righteous indignation. Jeremiah said, therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding it in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly. There's our word again, sowed, and upon the assembly of the young men together. Yeah, that sowed over there, that assembly that's around a false plan and a false word and a false prophet, I'm going to pour out the fury of God upon them. I can't hold it in. I have to pour it out. I have to scream it. I have to yell it. I have to warn them. You cannot hold the truth of God in unrighteousness. Lord, help them. Lord, help them. I will pour it out upon the assembly abroad and upon the assembly of young men together, for even the husband and the wife shall be taken, the aged, with him that is full of days. And their houses shall be turned unto others with their fields and wives together. I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. The hand of the Lord is about to be stretched out upon this land. It's time to blow the trumpet in Zion. In verse 13 here in Jeremiah 6, the prophet said, For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness, and from the prophet even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. And when you read a text like that, you have to think, well, they all can't be bad, you know. I mean, there's got to be a few good ones in there. But here's the deal. There's a true sowed, and there's a false sowed. And if you're in an assembly with a false sowed, a false message, and a false plan, you can't be anything but rotten because you have rejected the counsel of the Most High God. And... It's no other way. And everything in the American religious 501c3 establishment, it's money-driven, it's not truth-driven, and everyone that's a part of it, from the least to the, from the top of the food chain to the bottom, everyone is given to covetousness, everyone deals falsely. You're not going to get the truth. You're going to get a few things that are true here or there, but you're not going to get the truth that comes from standing in the council of the Most High God. In verse 14, they have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. This is the identifiable characteristic of the falsehood and the false message that came forth in the days of Jeremiah the prophet. Remember, we showed him that other text. He said, in the latter days, you'll you'll perfectly understand this, because the prophet was saying this false message of peace and safety that was there in 586 B.C. when Jeremiah stood in the council of the Most High God, this false message will be back right before Jesus returns, and I submit to you that it is here. The people that are stealing God's word from his people, they are there right now. Peace and safety, pre-trib rapture, peace and safety, once saved, always saved. Go down the line. Peace and safety, Trump will save us. Peace and safety, here come the Republicans. Over and over and over, this false message is identifiable And the prophet said in the latter days, you will consider it perfectly. And people that miss it, miss it to their own destruction. Just backing up to the last verse of Jeremiah 5, Jeremiah 5 and 31, Jeremiah said, the prophets prophesy falsely, and the priest bear rule by their means, and my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? It disgusts me. It just heats up my beans when I hear these people say, Oh, I just love your teaching. 
Oh, you're just the greatest thing since I spread. Oh, yes. But I still go to the First Baptist Church. And uh, I pay my tithes there because we take the kids down to Six Flags on the 4th of July. And I tell you what, you are trying to hold the church truth and unrighteousness. And bless your heart, uh, I know it takes time to figure things out. And I know it took me a while. But listen, we ain't got any time left. The time is running out. It's time to figure this out. If you're going to get right and walk straight, you better do it and do it now. Because this thing is coming down. It's time to wake up and walk straight. We need to woke up, not be woke. We need to woke up. Now, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 3, the Apostle Paul reiterates the fact that the false prophetic sowed before the return of the Lord would be this one of peace and safety. In 1 Thessalonians in chapter 5 and verse 3, the scripture says this, For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. The more they put their once saved, always saved messages on TBN, the more they put their the laws passed away messages, the more they say the Republicans are going to save us, the more swiftly their destruction is going to come. This is a false message. This is a false sowed. God is going to deal with it, and for all that have ears to hear and eyes to see, this can be perfectly understood, because the same false sowed in the days of Jeremiah when he stood in the council of the Most High God, it is here, and it is here right now. I am staking my eternal soul and my eternal destiny upon the fact that the words of Jesus Christ are true. This is my very favorite scripture in the word of God. In John chapter 8 and 51, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. I tell people, uh, uh, I, I have a little saying to say, I'm going to follow Jesus and what he said, and I'm going to see who's going to hang out with me. I will sit alone before I compromise the words of Jesus Christ. I will sit alone before I compromise the fact that God's law is still valid. I will sit alone. And when we have a bunch of people that are ready to sit alone rather than to compromise the truth of the Most High God, then we're starting to get a little coal in the engine of the Israel of God. I want to read a scripture from the book of Amos. In the book of Amos, in uh, chapter 3 and verse 7, a scripture that, and I use this scripture a lot. It's a great scripture. Amos 3 and 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants the prophet. Now that word secret, that's the word sowed. There it is again. And the Lord will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. God has a plan of judgment. And he's not going to bring judgment on America until he reveals his plan unto his servants, the prophets. And the, the prophetic warning will go out. And it will be heeded, or it will be rejected. But the Lord will make his sowed known before he brings forth judgment. I want to read a little bit from the commentary of Daniel Carroll on this verse, and he's just all over it. Uh, he says this, The term sowed, plan or secret, establishes the setting. It can refer to an assembly, human or divine. In other words, there's a true assembly above the firmament, where the Father meets with the angels, and there's true assemblies on earth that are speaking the same word that comes out of the council of the Most High God. It's thus saith the Lord. We don't, when we come to a thus saith the Lord we don't like, we don't put it on the shelf, we line up with it. We don't say the Old Testament's passed away or the words of Jesus aren't, aren't for you. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith Jesus Christ. We want it. We want all of God's words. 
He goes on to say, the idea is present in the Old Testament. Job chapter 1 and 2, Psalm 82, 1, 89, 5. We're going to read those texts for you. From this venue, Yahweh reigns as king, directing the flow of history and judging violations of the divine order of the world and the sin of his people. It was into this august congregation that the true prophets of Yahweh were granted privilege, access, and made privy to what God wanted to communicate to his people. When there is a true prophetic word that comes forth, it is coming forth from the council of the Most High God. And it will line up with the words of Jesus Christ and with the words of the Father. Now, in Amos chapter 9 and verse 10, and, and you know, this is what at stake. This is why I, I feel so rowdy this evening. This is what at stake. It's life and death, and it's not just physical life and death, but it's eternal life and death that's at stake for people. And a lot of people go into these churches, they're not trying to be bad, they're trying to be good. But my goodness, look what Amos said. In Amos chapter 9 and verse 10, All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, The evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Listen to that. In Amos's day, a lot of people said, Eh, Amos, judgment ain't coming. Judgment ain't coming. We're going to pull this one out. Listen to this again. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. What say you this evening about this Christ-rejecting nation we have? I say the evil will overtake it. I say it's time to get ready. I say it's time to pour out the fury of God upon the assembly of the mockers that are putting forth a false soda and a false message. And if people hate me for it, that's fine. If we can just wake up a few, God doesn't need everybody. He just needs a few that will totally lay down their lives for him and be willing to burn, be burned up on the altar of God in the third heaven. That's all he needs. He doesn't need everybody. He just needs a few. Now in Amos chapter 7, let's look at verse 10. Amos chapter 7 and verse 10. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos hath conspired against thee in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. Oh, my goodness. Now, Amaziah, he was also the czar of disinformation for the northern kingdom of Israel. Oh, yeah. He had that uh, position before uh, Miss, um, uh, I can't, yet. Yitzhak, or well, I can't say her name. Since I can't call her name, you know who I'm talking about. Jakovitz, I think, is probably pretty close. Since I can't say her name, I'm just going to call her Lollipop. She's our girl, Lollipop. And she's the disinformation czar. And she cannot bear the words of the living God either. Oh, no. And in verse 12, it says, Also Amazia said unto Amos, O thou seer! Go, flee thee away into the land of Judah, and there eat bread and prophesy there. Just get your little self out of here. But prophesy not again any more at Bethel, for it is the king's chapel, and it is the king's court. Well, what Amos said I think is pretty cool. He said, Then answered Amos and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was a herdman and a gather of sycamore fruit. Wasn't nobody big in that religious system. I was just a working man, but uh, he was a working man that stood in the council of the Most High God. In verse 15, he said, And the Lord took me as I followed the flock, and the Lord said unto me, Go prophesy unto my people Israel. Now therefore, hear thou the word of the Lord. Thou sayest, Prophesy not against Israel, and drop not thy word against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, 
Thy wife shall be a harlot in the city, and thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword. Yeah, they come up and said, Amos, just get out of here. Don't you prophesy anymore. He told the misinformation czar, your wife's going to be a whore. And oh yeah, your children are going to die. And he goes on to say, and thy land shall be divided by line. Yeah, your nice house, forget about that. And thou shalt die in a polluted land, and Israel shall surely go away into captivity forth of his land. Forget about your house. Forget about your land. Your wife's going to be a whore. Your children are going to die. He was talking so the man could understand him. This is time. It's time for plain talk. We do not need to be disillusioned one bit whatsoever about what's coming and about what's coming to be able to avoid it. In Revelation chapter 12, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17, the scripture says this, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. There's no other true remnant of Israel. And already in just what we've talked about this evening, we heard from uh, Yitzhak Shapira, and he said, only the words of the Hebrew Old Testament are inspired. Well, there goes the New Testament. There goes the testimony of Jesus Christ. And, oh, we know how many that say in dispensationalism, well, the law's passed away, the law's passed away. Oh, but I like to listen to, to old Rabbi Shapira because he's got some truth on some things. Well, you're trying to hold the truth in unrighteousness. The same thing is true when you try to think you've got truth about something and you go down to these compromises dispensational churches that are telling you the laws passed away you cannot hold the truth in unrighteousness you cannot do it there is no compromise on the testimony of Jesus Christ there is no compromise on the commandments of God neither of these items is negotiable this is the true sowed that comes down from the third heaven This is the only true sowed. Any assembly that is not built upon these two precepts, it is a false assembly. And I think with that, I'm going to take a break. Not a very long one because we got a lot more work to do. So we're going to take a short break and we're going to be right back in just a moment on the FOJC Remnant Gathering. We have much to offer here on FOJCRadio.com. Most listeners are familiar with our radio page where we're live on Fridays at 6 p.m. Central Time. And in, it includes our chat room where listeners can fellowship and read the scriptures that I post while Brother Dave is teaching. If you can't cast us live, we offer our podcast page with the latest audios of our remnant gatherings, or these same audios are made into videos and now videos on two new video channels. The easiest way to find our new channels is to go to our ministry news page on fojcradio.com. On that page, you'll find links to our new channels uh, on Variety On and the Underground Church, FOJC. And there's also links to our Doctrine of Christ series on Jimmy Vision and our Vault series. This makes it a lot easier for you to get the information with just a click. You'll find if there's going to be any events, we have that information on there. And we have um, a link to our free books and lots of other info. The latest info is on the ministry news page. I've tried to include answers to frequently asked questions on our Hot Topics page. We also try to help our listeners find local fellowships in their area with the Remnant Locations page. And for those who struggle with abuse issues, I offer my Ritual Abuse and Healing page. Our contact page has a short order form, some links for your love gifts, and of course, our contact information. On our resources page, you can find a list of our books, CDs, DVDs, free Bible studies, 
and tracts that can be printed or read. Check out our online Bible school or our music page. Both include easy-to-click audio files. And most important is our God Wants to Save You page. If you need help in leading someone to the saving mercy and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, there are plenty of uh, things to choose from on that page, including a little prayer that I wrote uh, to help lead people to accepting the Lord and inviting Him to be their Lord and Savior. It's all there, all free. So please use these many things that we offer on our website. We appreciate your support and have tried to make our site easy to navigate. But if you have a problem finding something, just email me at lastdayschurch at cs.com and I will be happy to help. Blessings to all our listeners and thanks again for your prayers and encouragement. Now back to tonight's message with Brother David Carrico on FOJC Radio. Welcome back to the FOJC Remnant Gathering. And as I always do after the break, I want to sincerely thank each and every one of you that studies with us and that prays for us and that supports us with your gifts and with your kindness. We do appreciate it from the very bottom of our heart. Also, less than a month till our Pentecost celebration and our event here, uh, our ministry news page, there's information about that. John and I will be talking more about that tomorrow night on the Midnight Ride. It's going to be an exciting time. We hope to see all of you there. Going to go back to work here. Um, in the Word of God, we want to make sure to do our very best to help everyone understand what the sowed is. And we talk about the sowed being the council of Jehovah uh, above the firmament, the third heaven. Let's read some scriptures. This is the sowed. In Jeremiah chapter 1, or excuse me, Job chapter 1 and verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. This was in the assembly, the sowed in the third heaven. This took place, and in Job 2 and 1, and again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. One of the most, well, I mean, what passage of Scripture isn't, perverted but a very misunderstood passage is psalm 82 uh, which is quoted by jesus and john 10 but this is what psalm 82 is talking about also psalm 82 and 1 god standeth in the congregation of the mighty he judgeth among the gods this is the the assembly the sowed in the third heaven and also in psalm 89 there's another passage about this heaven, and there's others. We'll just read this one more. Psalm 89, beginning in verse 5. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, thy faithfulness also, and the congregation of the saints. For who in heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints. There it is. And to be had in reverence of all them that are about him in psalm chapter 25 and verse 14 the word of the lord tells us what it takes to have the true sowed in psalm 25 and 14 the secret of the lord is with them that fear him and he will shew them his covenant now when we understand that the secret which is the word sowed there, that this is a secret. It's a revelation that comes to us from the very throne room of God. But the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. There is no secret and true sowed or true revelation. You see, the sowed means secret, but it also means plan. And if you ain't in the plan, you ain't got the right secret. There's a lot of people that are obviously following 
a different plan than we are. We're following the same plan that Jeremiah was following uh, in 586 B.C. I try to forget about the fact that they took him and they threw him in the dungeon. Uh, I don't like to think about that part. I bet, no, really, uh, I'm not. It's I'm not naive of of how this thing plays out. And and it says here, and he will shew them his covenant. You know, there's a covenant. And we are in a covenant with the Lord right now. There's an old covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And there's a new covenant also. And I think a lot of these people, uh, they fall into the category of uh, Matthew chapter 7. Uh, verses 22 and verse 23, when Jesus said, depart from me, I never knew you. You know, I think they've never known the Lord because a lot of these people in these churches, you talked about them about being in a covenant. They don't know what you're talking about. The new covenant, a covenant means you have obligations as well as God. And people today, they don't think they have any obligations. They don't even know what a covenant is. So I think that uh, many of them, of course, the Lord will judge them, thank God. That's above my pay grade. But, you know, uh, I don't think a lot of these people have ever known him because they have never been in covenant. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 3 and verse 32 for the forward is abomination to the Lord, but his secret, his sowed, is with the righteous. The sowed that comes from the throne room of God will only be found with them that fear him. It will only be with those that are walking in covenant to the commandments of God and the doctrine of Christ. It will only be found with them that are wanting to live righteously and wanting to live in that which is right and which is proper. Let's look at the prophet Hosea. And in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, a scripture that is familiar. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. We hear the first part of that quoted a lot more than the last. We hear a lot more, and it's good. It's all good. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We don't hear that as much as, well, if you forget God's law, he'll forget you. I think we need to quote both parts of that verse, don't you? And let's go to Hosea chapter 4, and let's go to the top of the chapter and let's just see uh, what it's a lack of knowledge of. In Hosea chapter 4 and verse 1 hear the word of the Lord ye children of Israel. You see whether it's Hosea whether it's Amos when they delivered the prophetic word hear the word of the Lord. You know it, this ain't my opinion. This is the word of the Lord. This is how the prophet spoke without authority. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Boy, cannot we say that this evening? That uh, hear the word of the Lord, America, the Lord has a controversy with this land. Oh, yeah, he's got a big controversy with the United States of America. Yes, he does. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Because there is no truth, no mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. But people will say, haven't you heard TBN? Haven't you heard Daystar? Haven't you heard the Moody Broadcasting Network? They're beaming the word of God from sun up to sundown. All you got to do is flick the dial and tune in. But I would submit to you that all of those groups, if we would acknowledge them, they're either throwing out the commandments of God or they're throwing out the testimony of Jesus Christ or they're trying to hold the truth of God in unrighteousness by mixing the truth of God in a system that's filled with Freemasons, pagan holidays. I submit to you that the word of God is rarely going forth in America today. The true word that's coming from the sowed in the third heaven, it is rarely, rarely heard. He goes on to say in Hosea 4 and 2, by swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committed adultery, they break out and blood toucheth blood. 
Listen to verse 3. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. I want to read a comment from the word biblical commentary on this text. It says this concerning Hosea 4 and 3. The drought famine language of verse 3 is recalled in that perishing often connotes death resulting from a lack of food and water. Wow. That's what we're talking about. It's all over Bibles. I mean, you can you can hear the the bright lights and the talking heads. They're even having to take notice of it. Uh, my goodness, there's just so many things we could say about this food shortage that's uh, just looming large. But this is literally what that language means. Uh, it's talking about uh, that word languish. It means death resulting from lack of food and water. God describes, going on, it says, God describes the tragic loss of covenant knowledge experienced by my people. Forgetting God's covenant law is an elaboration of the concept of rejecting God's knowledge. Oh boy, is that good. If you reject God's covenant law, you have rejected God's knowledge and you will perish for lack of knowledge. Likewise, there's that two-edged sword to Revelation 12:17. You cannot reject the law of God and you cannot reject the testimony of Jesus Christ. You reject either one, you're going to perish from lack of knowledge. And it's just that simple knowledge of receiving with childlike faith those pure words that the Lord gives us to walk therein. Let's look at Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, where the great prophet Isaiah wrote this. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. And I want to focus on one of those here for just a moment. He shall be called, and of course, this is a prophecy about Jesus, and he shall be called Counselor. Jesus is our Counselor. I want to read a comment on Barn, from Barnes' commentary on that word. It says, Counselor denotes one of honorable rank. One who is fitted to stand near princes and kings as their advisor. It is expressive of great wisdom and of qualifications to guide and direct the human race. Yes, Jesus is our counselor. And if we don't look to him, you see, everybody, I don't get all warm and fuzzy. Um, I stand strong, if you've been paying attention this evening, about the validity of God's commandments. But when people want to use this phrase, Torah observant, Torah observant, you Torah observant, what they're doing, they're putting the cart before the horse, and you're going to wind up with a skewed uh, outlook on many things. But when you come to Christ, everything will fall into place, and he will show you the true fulfillment and the understanding of all of God's law. Now, in the book of Matthew, chapter 4 and verse 4, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4, and we're going to go back. In this verse, Jesus is quoting a little bit of Deuteronomy to the devil. Jesus liked the book of Deuteronomy. And uh, he thought it was pretty effective in dealing with the devil. Here in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4, Jesus said this. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And where does it proceed from? It proceeds from from the sowed and the counsel of the Most High God. Now let's go to Deuteronomy and let's get the context of that which Jesus was quoting 
under the devil there. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Rich Mullins wrote a song called Quoting Deuteronomy to the Devil. It's a snappy little ditty. I like it. Uh, Deuteronomy 8 and 1. All the commandments which I have commanded thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may possess and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord sware unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not neither did thy fathers know that he may might make thee to know that man doth not live by bread of only but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live this is in the context of the children of Israel wandering in the wilderness with the poisonous serpents with with all of the things that they endured and the most and it was a trial for them to see if they would walk into the in the obedience to God's law or not and the most important thing we believe in prepping i practice and i teach and i encourage vehemently prepping noah did real good with that didn't he but if we do not understand that it is not by physical bread only but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of god if we understand that when we have done all that we can do the lord will do the rest but if we don't get this right it doesn't matter how many green beans and bullets you got it's not going to turn out well for you now in john chapter 5 verse 19 john chapter 5 verse 19 then answered jesus and said unto them verily verily i say unto you the son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the father do for what things soever he doeth these also doeth the son likewise jesus did the very same things that the father did and jesus had such a perfect relationship with god that he was just absolutely a perfect representation of that which the father was doing and that which he had done in john chapter 5 and verse 24 verily verily i say unto you hear that he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death to life and jesus required not only belief in him and what he said the doctrine of christ amen but he insisted that people believed that he was sent from the father and over and above that he insisted that people understand that he was doing exactly what the father was doing not something different in john chapter 14 and verse 10 jesus said believest thou not that i am in the father and the father in me the words that i speak unto you i speak not of myself but the father that dwelleth in me he doeth the works believe me that i am in the father and the father in me jesus asks us to believe not only that he was sent from the father but the very words he speak were the words that the father gave him to speak and then when we look in verse 15 you cannot separate this from obedience to god's commandments in john 14 15 if ye love me keep my commandments if ye love me keep my commandments because we're dealing with the very words of god and people are trying to steal the very words of god from the israel of god and we cannot allow it we cannot allow it and a lot of people are wondering well I just don't know if this guy is telling me the truth or not. Well, you never will know until you do this. In John chapter 7, verse 17, If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. You have to do the will of God, and there's no way to do the will of God outside of Romans 12 style to bring yourself as a living sacrifice. This is this equivalent to the scripture we read uh the secret of the lord 
is with them that fear him. The, the secret of the Lord, the sword of the Lord is with the righteous. This is the only way to be a possessor of the secret of the counsel of the Most High God. And if you do, it'll come to you. I mean, if you walk in obedience to God and you pray and seek his face, God's going to reveal his plan to you. You're, you're going to know whether you're standing in God's plan. You're going, to, you're going to be able to hear someone talk for five minutes or less, and you're going to know whether they're standing in the plan of the Most High God or they're doing something else. In Hebrews chapter 12 and beginning in verse 22, But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. He's talking about up above the firmament there, folks. And to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just made men perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. That's what we want to get, don't we? See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, how much more shall we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And just where would we go to find the secret of the Lord? Well, let me make this suggestion to you. Where would you find the secret of the Lord, but maybe in the secret place? Psalm 91 1 he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty and sister Donna's favorite verse here we got to throw it in right here in the the book of Colossians in the book of Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1 if ye then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God yeah Uh, if you'll do that and you'll walk in obedience God will reveal his soul unto you in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5 and 6 even when we were dead in sins hath quickened us together with Christ for by grace are ye saved and hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, you are invited to the heavenly sowed. It's just like the writer of the Hebrews said. (laughs) You're not come to any earthly mountain here, folks. You've come to the, the first general assembly of the firstborn. In Proverbs chapter 29, and verse 18. I'm just going to read a couple more scriptures here and we're going to close here. In uh, Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18, the scripture says this Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. That's just a bookend verse with Hosea 4 and 6 and so many of these. Where there's no vision. And that word is a little different there, the chazaw. But it means a direct impartation of words. Where there's no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Yeah, uh, if you, um, my people perish without knowledge. If you forget the law, God's going to forget you. Uh, it, it's all the same thing here. It's all walking in obedience and you see God desires to reveal himself and his plan and his words to you and the rub comes in when you receive God's word you might have to sit alone but if you're willing to sit alone and if you're willing to hold the truth and righteousness instead of unrighteousness God will give you all you can handle he sure will he is just desiring to pour out his truth and his heart to you in first samuel chapter 3 and verse 1 
And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And this is so plainly understood in our day. How many, and and there's not any, uh, where are the people on the big platforms that have the, the big platforms in Christian TV, Christian radio, you name it, where are they that telling you the vax is wrong, that are telling you and warning you of the judgment to come? Where are they? They're not there. They're not teaching the true sowed. They're teaching a false sowed. There's no open vision. That does not mean that God did not reveal himself to Samuel in that day, the child Samuel, and the Lord is revealing himself in open vision to many little Samuels right now. And uh, little Samuel S's. <laughs> if that's even the right way to say that. But uh, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Oh, yeah, that's what Pentecost is all about. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. They'll get a hold of that word of the Most High God. And I fear the prophet Amos, and I don't fear. It's nothing to fear, but I fear for those that have fallen to this deception that this is exactly where we're at. There's no open vision And in Amos chapter 8 and verse 11, Amos said this, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. A famine of hearing the words of the Lord. I believe this is where we're at. We're at a time when there's no open vision in our nation, the the so-called spiritual leaders have they've hoard out there's no other way to say it they have sacrificed the truth for the altar of popularity and plenty and their desires for earthly wealth and fame have much exceeded the truth one more couple more scriptures here and I'm going to close in John chapter 6 and verse 15 The Jews were all about an earthly kingdom. They wanted an earthly Jewish kingdom. And when Jesus wouldn't play ball with them, they wanted to, they just left him. In John chapter 6 and verse 15, when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. And many people left him at this point because they wanted that earthly Jewish kingdom. And in John chapter 6, verse 66, (laughs) there are no coincidences, are there? This is the scripture of apostasy, John chapter 6, verse 66. It says, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord to whom shall we go thou hast the words of eternal life now as then many people are turning from Jesus unto all kinds of false sods and broken cisterns but there's no other place to go turn to Jesus with all of your heart before it's everlastingly too late well sister Donna has a word from the Lord here she wants to share with you so I'm going to let her have the headphones here. And uh, she's going to have a word from the Lord. So here's Sister Donna. May 6, 2022. You will stand before me and take responsibility for all you have done in your body, as it says in Second Corinthians 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Also in 1 Corinthians 6 and 20, For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. My forgiveness and grace always reaches out and covers you You are offered this forgiveness if you repent of your sins, not past, present, and future, as some new translations and many false teachers and prophets declare. 
you have joined yourself to my enemy. You must cleanse yourself from that filth. Your praise in the false assemblies is stink in my nostrils. Your lies are destroying my people. Your words are falling into the pit. Know ye who I am. Know my words. Know my spirit. Know my son. Know my doctrine. You have been relying on the prayers of others. I want to hear words that come from your heart. For I say in Luke chapter 6 verses 45 to 47 a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil for of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh and why call ye me Lord Lord and do not do the things which I say Whoever cometh to me, and heareth my sayings, and doeth them, will show you to whom he is like. You need to cleanse your heart so I can fellowship with you. No longer should you say ritualistic prayers, but you must form your words according to what is in your heart. There is a field in the world that needs to be plowed. They have been corrupted by what has been preached in the so-called Christian pulpits. Many of those who call themselves Christians carry that title for others to see, but I have not heard them talk to me. Many in our world do not know who to pray to. They have no example, as they have seen in the churches and many who say they know me are hypocrites. Wake up, let your light shine, find my lost sheep, rescue the perishing, care for the dying, help me reach everyone who needs to be gathered into my kingdom. Strengthen your faith, know who your enemy is, do battle with me, call on me with a pure heart and seek my face, read my word and hide it in your heart. As it says in Jude 1 and verse 23, And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, with that, we're going with great thankfulness to conclude our broadcast this evening with great thankfulness to the Lord for allowing us to once again preach His Word via the Internet with much thankfulness to all of you that joined us for a broadcast this evening. Stay tuned on Now You See TV for uh, John and Patty Hall. You're going to like them. And tomorrow night I will be with John in the Puritan Barn. Now you see TV studios on the midnight ride. Tomorrow night we're going to be talking about sleeper cells and a lot of more going on with the planned destruction of our nation. So all of you that can, join us for that. So with our heartfelt thanks to all of you and to the Father, good night and God bless you all until next Friday night, 6 p.m. Central on the FOJC Remnant Gathering. Thank you for listening and joining in fellowship with us here at FOJC Radio Remnant Gathering. You can contact us at FOJC Post Office Box 671 Tell City, Indiana 47586 or you can email us at lastdayschurch at cs.com or you may call us at 812 812- 836-2288 You can check out our website at www.fojcradio.com Thanks and God bless.